They say you should never talk about politics and religion in polite company. Bill, they say uh, at a <laughs> dinner party you should never talk about sex, politics, or religion. Have you ever been invited to a dinner party in your life? <laughs> but I would argue that of these two topics, politics is a little easier to talk about. Take late night television as an example. Late night TV hosts are very comfortable talking about politics. In fact, they talk about it every night. And the election of Donald Trump has ensured job security for comedy writers everywhere, at least for the next four years. But how many of these shows consistently bring religion into the conversation? As far as I see it, Stephen Colbert is the only late night host in a very crowded field of hosts who regularly talks about politics and religion. But unlike many TV personalities, Colbert's treatment of religion is unpredictable. He ranges from a reverent parody that borders on sacrilegious to empathetic interviews that dig into his guests' personal beliefs. Uh, uh, you went to Georgetown. Are you a Catholic? Yes, I was Because it's a Catholic. Jesuit school. Yes, it's, oh, I've only gone to Catholic schools. Jesuit high school, Jesuit college, Catholic elementary school. For something that often makes people feel so uncomfortable to talk about in public, what is it about Colbert that enables him to talk about religion in a public secular forum with a level of nuance that other late night hosts lack? I argue that Colbert's ability to weave religion into his public platform stems from the fact that he is more religiously literate than your average TV host. But what do I mean by that? On one hand, religious literacy refers to simple head knowledge about the world's religions. Sikhs are an in independent religion. I know that. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know what, Americans probably know that too. Using the American public as an example, research has shown that Americans don't know even the simplest of facts about religion. According to a Pew Research survey, only 47% of the American public knows that the Dalai Lama is Buddhist. Only half of Americans know that the Quran is the holy book of Islam. And only half know that Martin Luther is known as the man who inspired the Protestant Reformation. We must ironically conclude that the US is a very religious country with a very big religious illiteracy problem. What are the Ten Commandments. <laughs> what are all of them? You want me to name them yeah. all? Please. Now I'm not going to pretend that Colbert is some sort of expert, but he does seem to clear this very low bar that the average American has set. As a practicing Roman Catholic, he possesses a crazy amount of knowledge about Catholicism that would win any trivia contest. How, as a Catholic, how do you sell your house faster? You bury St. Joseph, a statue of St. Joseph, upside down yes. in your lawn. You do. He also seems very familiar with the Bible. Do you have a favorite uh, passage from the Bible? Yes, I do. Do you? I do. Okay, let's hear yours. Um, uh, so I like it. Mine's from Matthew. I like it because uh, Jesus says, uh, So I say to you, do not worry, for who among you by worrying could change a hair on his head or add a cubit to the span of his life? But I don't think knowing a bunch of trivia about Catholicism in the Bible alone makes him a religiously literate person. Sure, it probably helps, but religious literacy is more than knowing simple facts. Like any form of literacy, religious literacy is a skill. A skill to realize that religion is found all throughout culture and the skill to identify when these religious influences are at work. And this is why I think Colbert excels in public conversations about religion. Not because he is religious himself. Not because he has a lot of knowledge about his own religion. But because Colbert seems to realize that religion is everywhere and that it shapes and motivates the individuals that he interviews. What is the hijab and what does it mean to you? Were you raised a Catholic? I was raised Catholic. Are you a religious guy? Um, you know what? I am. While etiquette tells us to avoid these probing topics with strangers, as soon as Colbert realizes that religion might be a motivating factor for his guest, he pursues that line of questioning without getting too awkward about it. Well, usually he's not too awkward. You, you were raised Catholic, I right? I was raised Catholic. Come on back, Bill. <laughs> The door is always open! <laughs> Colbert may be the host of a secular TV show, but he doesn't interpret that secularity to mean the absence of religion. But rather, he uses this as an opportunity to discuss religion in an open forum where it might be celebrated, critiqued, or even criticized. Now, this isn't supposed to put Colbert on a pedestal. Who knows, maybe all of this comes from a staff of writers behind the scenes, and he's just reading from a teleprompter most of the time. But from what I see, especially in his interviews, 
Colbert demonstrates a method for talking about religion that we can emulate. A method that isn't afraid to poke fun at religion or criticize religion, but neither is afraid to bring it into the discussion in a way that is meaningful and relevant. To be honest, <laughs> certainty, certainty about anything yes. is the most terrifying thing to me. So, I, What do you mean certainty is terrifying? Certainty is terrifying? Yeah. I mean... <sighs> if you knew that there was an afterlife, would that be comforting or terrifying? How, how would I ever know? It's a myth that religion is a private affair separated from our secular public life of politics and culture. Religion is everywhere from our architecture to our calendars and even our presidential inaugurations. Being religiously literate means being able to identify these religious influences and to discuss them intelligently, whether you're just a normal layperson or the bishop of late night himself.